Hello, this is Danny Marino. This is a deleted chapter from my book, To Make Matters Worse. Uh, this was a chapter that I felt as though maybe didn't go with the flow of the entire book. Not to mention it's a little bit of a crazy story, so didn't want to offend anybody. So without further ado, this chapter is called The Pork Chop Express. You've been forewarned. I love cooking, and I especially like to barbecue. I also love feeding people. I really should have gotten into the restaurant business because watching people enjoy what I cook is a wonderful feeling to me. My friends, family, and acquaintances know that I can crush it when it comes to slow cooking and making anything taste amazing. Some guys can fix drywall and build stuff, but I can cook just about anything. One of the things I always wanted to cook was a pig. I remember as a kid going to a few pig roasts with my dad's hunting club in New Jersey and having the greatest time. So when the opportunity arose to get a pig and cook it myself, I obviously jumped on it. The situation itself, though, was a little strange. This girl that used to work for me had a friend who had a mobile petting zoo. She would bring the animals to your home for your children's party and the kids could feed the animals and pet them. She had a boar, similar to the boar's head logo, for the provisions company. Just like the company depicts, this was a wild animal and it was not what you should be bringing to a children's party. In conversation, she stated she was going to put the boar down because it was mean and a light bulb went off in my head. I figured this was my chance to cook a pig, so I told her not to put it down, but to give it to me. I'll cook it. She agreed, but I didn't realize this was easier said than done. She delivered the boar to me and let me take it, still in the cage, home. It was around 50 pounds and for an animal, seemed to be a really angry prick. I blocked off a section of my yard for him to live for a week or so, and I fed him apple juice and pumpkin pies for a week. Like an unlucky character in a fairy tale, I wanted to fatten and sweeten him up. The real issue was I couldn't just whack him in my backyard. I can't fire a gun in my suburban Scottsdale neighborhood, so a buddy of mine and I took him out into the desert in the early evening to bump him off. We drove and drove and kept coming up to these newly built developments where we still couldn't fire a gun. Finally, I got tired of driving. I got out of the truck, walked over to the pig, shot him in the head, and drove off before anyone could call the cops about a gunshot. It was quick, clean, and painless. We still needed to clean him, so my buddy and I drove further out of town to my friend Max and Gloria's getaway house, which is surrounded by desert. I knew no one would be home, so we cleaned the boar on the side of his property, leaving the scraps for a mountain lion I once saw looking at me through their window when I had visited. I planned a day off to cook the pig, but as luck would have it, I ended up having to work, which meant that I would have to cook the pig behind my furniture store during a Saturday afternoon while open for business. I borrowed this box known as a Cuban oven, which was made by a company called La Caja China off of a buddy of mine. This made it easy to cook the pig anywhere. I brought it home ready to eat, and everyone that came over thought it was delicious. Considering the weird boar came out so good, I always wanted to cook another pig, but this time a legit pig, one that was meant for a pig roast and not some angry prick who wanted to bite me. My wife bought me the Cuban oven for Christmas, and after cooking a few turkeys, chickens, and multiple racks of ribs, I was game for doing a pig again. I had mentioned to a friend that I was looking to buy a pig, and he suggested I call this Yugoslavian guy who knows a guy, and by mentioning his name, they will sell me a pig off another guy for a great price. It was already starting to look a little bit shady, but who am I to judge anybody? Sometimes you just have to go through a guy to a guy that knows a guy, you know. So I made the call, and I spoke to this woman whose English was so poor I was nervous she wouldn't even get anything I was requesting right. I asked for a pig approximately 60 to 70 pounds, and I needed it cleaned. There was no way I was going through the cleaning work again. Now, how the pig is prepared is really important to how it cooks. The ribs of my pig needed to be split so I could connect it properly to the cage and flip it inside the box. I set out in the morning that day to go pick it up with coffee in hand and a palpable excitement for my celebration coming up that evening, and I started on my way. For starters, the place I had to go to get the pig was hidden in the middle of nowhere. I was beyond the outskirts of town and somewhere in the middle of the desert. This clearly wasn't an official farm. I was late upon arrival. The place was really hard to find, and when I did get to my destination, I was freaked out. I was let into this strange side gate onto a property that looked like the Sawyer family from Texas Chainsaw Massacre owned. There were bones hanging from inside the fence and animal skins hanging and drying out. Inside the large fence, there were these shanty makeshift shacks that I think people were actually living in. 
There was a mud pit loaded with pigs, and they were all fighting to climb over each other to eat this disgusting slop that they seemed to love. I tried to snap a picture, but I was getting strange looks from the people inside, so I kept it to myself. The property had more than just pigs. They were goats, chickens, and cows all just walking around. I think there was a llama as well. It was really random. This was definitely not old McDonald's farm. I saw to my left, upon entering, the animal version of the Thunderdome. A cow had just been slaughtered and was on the table. It was a horrible sight. The head was chopped off and laying on the muddy floor. I swear it was looking at me. Its legs and insides were all over the table. I grew up hunting, and cleaning an animal was never a big thing to me, but this whole visual was just horrific. Some guy I didn't understand led me to this woman who was awaiting my arrival. There was my pig, freshly slaughtered, just sitting next to her on the floor when she asked me if I had the cash. I noticed the ribs weren't split, and I asked her if she could have someone do it. She grabbed the hacksaw and did it herself in what was one of the longest few minutes of my life. I just stood there while she split the ribs in shock. While this was happening, three dudes straight out of Africa come walking up yelling about who knows what at each other. I was ready to get the fuck out of there. Nothing about this place seemed all right, but I had already had people coming over and I needed to get the pig, so unfortunately for me, there was no turning back. I went outside to get the plastic laid out for my Kia Soul. I had no one available with a truck to help, so I was going to have to ride in a car with this pig all the way home back to my house. I was still contemplating leaving, but I had come this far, so I stayed and went back inside to get the pig. When I came back in, two more African guys showed up from around the corner, trying to rally this aggressive goat near where the cow was that was just kicking and fucking going crazy. The goat was abnormally big and kicking the shit out of these two guys. It was pretty obvious the goat knew he was next and didn't want anything to do with being turned into curry goat. Their friends were all now yelling at each other, and I could see two of them had a pistol handy. If someone stabbed a big aggressive guy like Maytag in the eyeball all those years ago, they would have no problem feeding me to the pigs if something was going to go down between these African guys and I was a witness. I told the lady that the ribs were cut enough. We loaded the pig into my Kia, and I split the scene faster than I hit the door at Brooklyn Boob's plus-size pool party. The whole morning was disturbing, but I gotta say, that pig was delicious. One thing's for sure, though, I will never get a pig from a guy who knows a guy type of a situation ever again.